Some people get confused between accounts receivable and accounts payable. Accounts receivable represent amounts of money that are owed to the company, typically stemming from credit sales, which are called trade receivables. But a company could also have non-trade receivables. For example, they might have made loans to their executive officers, they might be expecting a tax refund from the government, or they might have interest receivable. The common denominator is that these are amounts owed to the company. The company is expecting to receive the money at some point in the future. With accounts payable, on the other hand, these are amounts owed by the company to their vendors. The company has purchased goods or services on credit, and they promise to pay for those goods or services at some point in the future. So whereas accounts receivable is going to result in a cash inflow, cash coming into the company, accounts payable is going to result in a cash outflow, cash going out of the company. For that reason, accounts receivable is recognized generally as a current asset. I've seen some cases where companies were expecting some receivables to be realized several years into the future, and so they recognize those receivables as a non-current asset. But generally, account receivable is a current asset. Account payable, on the other hand, is going to be a current liability. Remember, it's a liability because you're expecting to sacrifice resources at some point in the future because you are going to have to pay for those goods or services that you purchase today on credit at some point in the future. Now, another difference between accounts receivable and accounts payable is that accounts receivable is presented net of the allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, you know that you are owed this money, but you also know that not everybody's going to pay you, right? Some people are not going to pay you the money, and so you present accounts receivable on the balance sheet net of the estimated uncollectible accounts. Okay, accounts payable is not presented net of uncollectible accounts. There is no such offset. Okay. Now, although receivables and payables are different, and I've laid out the reasons uh, here for that, they are related. And I want to give you an example. Let's say that we had a retailer. Okay, the retailer acquires inventory. Okay, so they buy the inventory, and when they buy it, they buy it on credit, which generates payables. Okay, so they acquire inventory and they get an account payable in the process, but then they sell the inventory. Okay, and let's say that they sell the inventory on credit that is going to create a receivable. So in short, the retailer acquires the inventory and thus generates payables. And then what did they do with that? They turn around and sell the inventory, which creates receivables. So you generate payables okay, by acquiring this inventory, then sell the inventory and you get receivables and hope to collect that at some point in the future. Another important point to, to note is that one company's payable, one company's account payable is another company's account receivable. So let's do another example. So let's say we have the company Boeing, Okay, and let's say that they purchase some jet engines from General Electric on credit. Okay, Boeing is going to have an account payable because they now owe money to General Electric. They bought the inventory on credit. They promised to pay General Electric at some point in the future. So Boeing has incurred a liability. They have a payable. At some point in the future, there will be a cash outflow. General Electric, on the other hand, has a receivable from this transaction. They are owed money by Boeing. Okay, so Boeing's payable is General Electric's receivable.